Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Guilds of London. Uh, this was sent to me by Tasty Minstrel Games and designed by Tony Boydell. London, the biggest, most important, and richest city in England in the late medieval and early modern periods. The guilds played a major role in the lives of London citizens, controlling the way in which trade, manufacturing, and business were conducted in the city. The members of the guilds, the liverymen, were... Rich men, okay, I'm not gonna read all this. It's about guilds. You get it. Alright, let me give you kind of like a understanding how to play. So in Guilds of London, you're trying to get victory points. And in order to get victory points, you have to control guilds. Each of these squares here represents a guild. You get different rewards for winning them uh, or getting second place. And uh, there's also a plantation and scoring board, which I'll explain briefly, but uh, we'll focus on this for now. Now, turn order in the game is decided by who's winning. So, let's say blue's in first, red is in second, green is third. Blue would go first, because going first is less advantageous in this game. Now, every player in their hand has a set of action cards. Uh, you get six in the beginning, and you can hold up to seven or eight if you have a special building tile. Uh, the University of London. And there are three different types of actions you can do. You can hire a liveryman, which is what these little guys are. Um, you can move a liveryman or use a special ability. If you want to hire a liveryman, you can choose any one of your cards and play it, and that lets you get a uh, liveryman from your general supply. So let's say Blue uh, hires a liveryman, so they, they uh, discard a card and they add a liveryman to the uh, guild. This lets you have more liveryman in play and more, you know, opportunities to move them around. If you want to move a liveryman, you would play a card that represents the color of that guild. So looking here, um, okay. So if you look here, maybe a red player wants to play a green card. That would allow them to put one of their uh, liverymen on any of these green guilds. As you can see on the corners here, top right corner, they have different colors. And let's say we'll put them in, I don't know, the um, dyers. Or if you want, you can use a special ability. And on the cards, you can see they have pictures describing uh, sort of a special effects. And in the top left corner, they have costs. This one is worth zero, so it's a free action. This one is worth two, so you have to pay uh, two. Two cards, as you can see on the back of the cards, um, there are coins, so each coin represents one, or we, each card represents one coin. So you would discard two cards to play this card. At the end of your turn, if you have if you played no cards that turn, you get to draw four cards from the deck. Otherwise, if you did, you get to draw two cards. Now on each guild space, you can see there are, in the top left corner, they have a number. This one says four, this one says two. Um, what that means is that needs that's the number of livery men on that tile that need to be on it for that guild to start triggering. Including this guy, the beetle, which I'll explain in a second. And including any special uh, neutral pawns, which you can get various ways. These are basically pawns you can put on um, guild tiles to uh, contribute to the total you need and yet they don't count towards any specific player. There are three stages in the resolving tiles phase and you resolve tiles uh, from top left the bottom right, so like this. Let's say these three on here. Aha, three is a number we need to resolve this tile. So now we go into stage one, which is negotiation. Each player may choose to replace zero, one, or more colored liveryman pawns on that tile with neutral liveryman, liveryman, liveryman piles they have in their um, personal stock. So if you have some of these little uh, neutral guys, what you can do is, if you want, take any colored pawns up to two and replace them. So you could get rid of blue and basically make them not get anything or um, you could do other things like that. So if there were more on here, you could do up to two and switch them out. Like I said, neutral liverymen don't count towards any specific player, but what you can do is use them to reduce somebody else's uh, hold on that tile. Then you count off the pawns of each color and see um, who is the winner. So let's say on this one there was, let's say two red, a green, and the beetle, all right? So there's four guys on here, and there is a majority uh, number of four. So red is clearly the winner. Red would get this, four victory points, plus uh, they get to draw three action cards and keep one, and they also get another guy. The green player would get a neutral livery pawn, livery pawn, livery man, whatever they're called, and they would get one victory point, and there are there are second place tokens all over, and they're all random. If there is a tie for first place, then what you would do is look at adjacent tiles. So red wins. That means this gets flipped over, and red player would leave one of their pawns on here, and that pawn becomes a master pawn. It basically represents that red controls this guild. In the event of a tie, let's say there was a tie on this tile, 
um, between, let's say, red and green, um, then you would look at adjacent tiles and go, oh, well, red controls this tile and it's adjacent to this one. That means that breaks the tie and red would win. If there's still a tie after that, then the tile does not resolve and all pieces remain on the tile. After all the tiles are resolved that need to be resolved, you go over to the growth phase and you resolve the plantation tile, which I'll show you. The growth phase only occurs when you get to a round with a gray circle on it. So when you get to round three, um, you would do the plantation phase. And then if you have three to four players, you would actually add tiles over to this because this actually gets bigger as you go. Throughout the game, there are ways basically to put pawns on the plantation tile here. Um, and then it's kind of the same thing where you can negotiate and remove some and add neutral players. Um, and then you count the vote and then whoever wins uh, gets a reward. So for this tile, the first player would win seven victory points and the um, second player would win three victory points. If you win the plantation tile, um, as you can see, you have to return some of your uh, liveryman pawns, not to the guild hall, but actually to the general supply. So you would uh, basically lose them and would have to buy them again in a future turn. So. This is kind of like an extra way to get some points, and uh, but it costs um, livery men if you choose to do so. And it depends on how many players you have, but basically if you see here, they show you how to basically add tiles on. It'll build up into a bigger and bigger board. The beetle, which I mentioned before, always goes on the lowest no uh, guild number tile. So uh, this one is the lowest guild number tile, so the beetle would go here. Finally, there are mayoral reward cards, and these are basically special bonus conditions that can give you uh, victory points at the end of the game. At the start of the game, you get three and you pick one and uh, give the others back. Uh, but throughout the game, you can get these mayor rewards, and uh, at the end of the game, they'll be kind of like secret bonus points that you can surprise the other players with at the end. That's pretty much it. You try to control guilds by majority vote, um, get victory points, get rewards, get more guys, put them on more things. That's pretty much it. It's a decent game where you're basically doing like area control, trying to like get the guilds, and you know, it's fun. It's fun putting little guys on there, but man, there is one major complaint I have about this game. Every single tile and every single card has symbols. And not just like a couple symbols, there are all different kinds of symbols. Just write the text on the card. This is infuriating. Like, sure, if there were like a couple symbols, but there are so many symbols in this game. Like, this is not intuitive. Like, if I look at this card, I have to like decipher a goddamn code about how this works. Now, there are reference sheets that have explanations for them, but they. But what, what's even worse is that not all the cards are on here. This is absurd to me. Like, okay, fine, you're gonna have symbols and the reference sheet, fine. But you're not even gonna provide all the cards on here? Like, that's, that's maddening. That's absolutely maddening to me. The special tiles, the mayoral rewards, they all have this problem, and they're on like little tiny reference sections. So it's like, they're not even in the rule book. You have to find these and it's just, it's a mess. Like looking at, looking at these text descriptions, if they just had the text on the card, it'd be so much easier to play. So much of the game when you're starting out is just going, wait, what is, I don't, okay. Like, like what the hell is this? All right, I guess I gotta look up what the symbols mean and try to find it on the on the reference sheet oh it's not on the reference sheet okay then i guess i'll just try to figure out by the symbols my god put the text on the card anyways after you've kind of figured out what certain symbols and cards mean it plays a little bit better and yeah and then you get to have like a kind of fun little area control game where you've you know voting and getting getting tiles and getting benefits you know there's fun to be had here um, the plantation tile mechanic, where you're basically sending the guys to that other tile, feels like an afterthought. Like, you can only really do it by actions, but it just... I mean, I guess it's okay. It, it didn't really strike me as particularly interesting. Um, just kind of like a weird separate area that go, oh, I guess I'll throw a guy on there just to do it. The main meat of the game for me is the voting on the guild tiles. Overall, it's a decent game. It's not complicated to play, but it's really a drag to figure out how all the cards work when it could just very easily just have text on it. That's my main complaint about it. Otherwise, it's okay.